wreath of indefinite and shifting proportions. On the 5th of March, 1867, the Moravia and many others, if three weeks of seemingly by something rather sharp and gay, we are sinking. Finally, I found the sea immediately extinguished. Let my Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I stayed up uh, pretty late last night painting a lot of this stuff. Just fired up the wood stove again this morning, but paint kicked off pretty good. Um, but as you can see, the door behind me has actually also been painted and it brings up something important I'd like to talk about. And it's um, a few of the mistakes I've made. <laughs> now I'll be honest with you, um, I've made a few mistakes, and it was to be expected. It's kind of one of the reasons I have a plywood boat, um, so that's not too expensive to fix them later on. Um, I'm just, I'm not born on a boat. This doesn't come to me supernaturally. And I think a lot of people miss that. I, I think a lot of people forget that you, you have to kind of learn in order to know things. You can't just be born knowing them. Um, a lot of people like to shame me when I tell them, you know, I, I don't have a lot, you know, I'm learning, I'm doing this. But yeah, I'm just a novice and I'm just learning how to go. And uh, my little door here was probably a good indication as to uh, my experience level. As you remember, the door was the first thing I kind of built. Ooh, cold as ice out here. And um, it kind of showed because I just didn't know what I was doing. And I had built it opening the other way, as you'll recall. And the funny thing about a door on a boat is you kind of always want them opening outwards because water, <laughs> water gets in. If you have a door that opens inwards, it'll hit that and run down the seams and it'll leak. And uh, that's what was happening to my door. So no matter how tight I got it shut, it was always leaking a little bit. And uh, I'll be putting a lock contraption on here soon and then I'll get her sealed properly with little rubber gaskets. But what I did this time is I just cut it down so that it would fit inside of the seam that I made um, last summer. And then I laid in a nice thick um, slip on the inside here that sticks out about an inch all the way around. And I'm just gonna finish epoxying that soon. But uh, that gives us a really firm place for the door to seal up against and once we get some rubber gaskets in there she's not leaking at all and already she opens a lot better but oh, look at that I love just the way that looks nice and snug along there isn't that good all right well let's move on to the second thing I have uh, screwed up that is right over here now see this beam remember these beautiful beams that I made. I measured them out 20 feet long. Everybody said the boat was 20 feet wide. I said, okay. I actually didn't measure it right on here. And that was the mistake. I measured it right there. And there, it's about 19 feet wide. And I figured this distance probably only expands another six months, uh, six inches or less. So um, I ordered a 20 foot piece. And as you can see, it, it, it kind of doesn't totally, I mean, it's all right. We got maybe an inch to spare here, but I don't have an inch to spare over here. Actually, I'm a foot short. Now, I didn't get some lightweight carbon fiber performance beams or anything, so they're not exactly super expensive. So I just ordered another one. It arrived yesterday. I routed it, sanded it, stained it, and spar varnished it but I didn't get any of that on camera. Um, and it's sitting right over there by my truck. So we'll have to get that out soon and put it in the right spot so that I can take this beam out as this one's driving me nuts, cut it out, fix all the rot underneath it and get this beam that I bought earlier into that beam's place. 
and then we'll have an extra one and I think I'm gonna replace that stern beam at the back with uh, with that little spare beam and then the stern beam I might just mill down and use it somewhere else on the boat because it's a wooden boat and you need wood for a wooden boat and if you might notice the audio quality on this episode is a little bit improved and that is thanks to comic out which sent out their new microphone which I'm using right now um, so I was using a road mic which kept giving me a lot of problems they heard about my problems and they sent me out this guy since I'm using it right now this is the CVM V30 LITE light it's the cardioid condenser light shotgun style microphone um, it's kind of uh, not as big as the video mic pro that I had a long time ago and it's a lot it's a little bit bigger than all the video micros that I had um, so this is kind of a hopefully a nice middle ground but the video micro wasn't good enough quality to really stand up to the abuse that I put it out here and the video mic pro was too big and too delicate um, so Maybe this one will last, um, you guys be the judges. So this episode's not sponsored by them, but I didn't pay for it. Um, but that's all right because it's actually really affordable. So check it out, link in the description if you're into a microphone and you like the way this one sounds. All right, well, it might not look like uh, very clean, but um, first coats of primer are done. Second coat over here as well. I'm using an oil-based primer. It stinks like crazy. It's eaten up most of my day doing this, um, but uh, yeah, I feel good about it. it feels really clean and, and, the, and it goes on really thick and like seeps in there really deep. So I'm hoping that when we do the oil-based paint over top of it, um, and it gets all done. I think I'm gonna use rollers for that and uh, It should come out um, Nice and slick. I want to make sure that it's like a really good seal for all of this stuff because you know lacquers and stuff are really great But um, one of the best sealants in the world is just paint paint does a really good job It's quite UV stable quite Moisture stable and this oil based stuff is some pretty heavy Anyway, just noticed I got a little bit of paint in my beard well, I spent a little bit of time destroying a lot of things today and a lot of time painting a little bit of things. But in the end, I guess I feel pretty good about it. Somebody once told me that a big part of creation is destruction. I'd like to believe that. And that being said, I'm going to spend the rest of this evening um, doing more troubleshooting on my Wi-Fi antenna, which still isn't running. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll get it running tonight. <sighs> and uh, we'll pick this party up tomorrow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it. Another day, another coat of paint. Um, this time we did all of the uh, oil-based exterior white high gloss paint. And we have Micah here helping us out. Micah, say hi. Hello. And um, it come out pretty good. I'm actually kind of impressed. I'm, I'm gonna do two coats of that stuff. Um, so I'm gonna hit it later on. I'm gonna let it give like two days maybe to dry completely hard. It takes a while in the winter for everything to dry, but uh, it will dry eventually. Hit it with some high grip sandpaper and uh, give it another coat. And it should get a nice glossy, very waterproofy kind of finish. But in the meantime, we're gonna get out to the sea lark. And uh, I haven't really been out to her pretty much all winter other than just checking her bilges. So there's a few things we'd like to clean up on her. Yeah, it's disgusting is what that is. That's my spare anchor. Another problem is this has rusted itself, corroded itself, completely shut. Luckily, we brought the key. So you push that back anyway. There, you remove those boards. I bought the line for this anchor 
out of uh, Walmart <laughs> for $11.99 and it's holding really well. And uh, she had some chafing points earlier. I just changed where it was set, but we'll get some good rope out here on the boat soon. But it's done a really good, admirable job this winter. When a lot of other anchor lines, a lot of other mooring lines, a lot of other boats have failed, this one hasn't. So, you know, read into that what you will. Look at all this junk that was inside the boat, including the life jackets, which I will now keep in the dinghy for safety. So we haven't known the name of this boat of all the year that I've been here so far, but it is called the Masala and it's yeah. junk rigged and electric motored. And um, it's one hell of an interesting little boat. And we're, we're here with the owners, uh, <laughs> Peter and Aaron, and uh, they're giving us a little bit of a tour and a little bit of a breakdown on their um, junk rig setup and electric motor yeah. setup. Like you, 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 you can pay you that on, on the 90, it's a thwart ship all the way along right there. So this thing that Aaron talked about is this thing right here. This thing okay. that she said you have to snub back towards the, the, the this thing towards the mast, right? I don't know if you okay. see that at all, but this is what this snubber is. Yeah, the because snubber. Because what happens is as this thing goes up, it wants to wander away. That's the, this yard, you know? Yeah. And it's all loose. It's like a Venetian blind, right? It's just like a, like a, like a, so up she, so like, so this one follows and eventually you snub it in. But if this was catching wind now, it would start to want to wander. These hold it back. These are called standing perils or whatever, right? They go from end of batten to about as far as the sail flies forward. I don't know if yeah. you can see it's coming forward or it's going back. This goes all the way back so that this ends up back here. Brilliant. And that's pulled by this guy. It's, it's not high enough to get them yet. They start right here. These guys, they, they lace around the mass this way. So those are the forward and they, ones and then they you pull, have to... They pull, yeah, they, they, they pull the sail in this way, that yeah. way, like this. Yeah. And obviously the sheets off the back pull it back in like a sail does, right? Yeah. The sheets. So you, got, you start to see them here. Look, there's the first one coming down here. But otherwise, it's all just standing perils, is what they call them. Uh -huh. Tie off here, and it's just believable. With a fucking light line you can use, like you won't. It's just there's no force here, right? Like this, this is overkill. A quarter inch line holding this thing, like. So there's like, no tension. On... No man, you know, in, in like 30, 30 knot gale, I can hold on to the sail with my hands like this. Like what? the mast, the mast bends like. It doesn't make any sense this thing to me. Bends Why? bends like a hockey stick, man. It's like it's so light. It's incredible. I, I, it just stays, right? Like it right. does not. I, it creaks every once in a while and moans until it settles and then it stops entirely. So the box, this box starts here and it goes down. It goes down another three feet below the deck. Yeah. So what I've got is a one to ten, ten to one berry, which is the geometry you need to be able to hold that in place, right? Yeah. So uh, I've never ever seen this thing bend to the point, get the kind of stress that you would ever. You, think you don't even have a tabernacle solid. like I've built. You well, don't yeah, have. But, but then imagine like if you, that's heavy, man. Eh? Like I need to see how she's gonna go. Yeah, and you okay? So you see, one of my, one of the problems with this with this. I did I goof a lineup? No, no, running. There's okay. So there is five of these batteries. These are these are 4D Discover batteries. Yeah. They're 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 AGM, AGM so they're absorb mm -hmm. glass mat. They can't they absorb their own gases, so you know we might not kill ourselves. So, so that's the, that's that's a quite a bit of weight. It's almost 1,200 pounds in batteries. Actually. Wow. Yeah. At, yeah. I have our ballast. So. My my batteries. So my batteries total 20,000 watt hours. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And weigh. 360 pounds each yeah these no, things are three, in total these things are 290 or 260 each ah, fuck, yeah 260 each, each all my batteries put together uh, oh, weigh fuck. 360 pounds oh yeah wow yeah basically needed this ballast exactly it's, it's, all, it's all internal i don't have a keel i no this floor here this this cabin sole is is about this about this much depth mm -hmm. and in there we've we've molded <laughs> believe it or fucking not man I, I can show you pictures of it but it's it's molded ingots of lead that fit precisely into each trapezoidal space as it reduces in oh. compound angles right so <laughs> it's probably about here somewhere so around. these little dagger boards somewhere. that run and they're hollow they're hollow and they're at about 22 degrees coming okay. out of this chine right about this point right here. Yeah. All the way across from two feet ahead of that to just about back here is where the tail is, right? And they're about, it's about this tall and the angle it comes out at is just about two inches above the very bottom of the boat. Mm -hmm. So rocks on them. A mizzen mass is fucking brilliant, man. You can steer with it like nobody's business. Yeah. Like, and I wonder if you would really be kind of, you know, you, you, you've got two masts, I guess, one in each pontoon, but there's nothing really helping you, there's nothing giving you anything better than a, than a sloop that's missing its foresail, really, you know, if yeah. you think about it, because both of them are on the same, 
um, what's that axis in the yeah, cross exactly. axis, right? So you've got nothing else to counteract. No. Maybe one simply in the middle, like a windsurfer sail on a on a on a boom vang or something. Yeah, is maybe. Call that in the back, a boom vang is something extends. Yeah. Well, the, one, one of the one of the designs I've seen and a lot of people use is they put the mizzen on the pontoon here and then like it'll be right near the transom and they'll have yeah. a pole a hollow pole stick out along the deck out all the way back and then run the sheet right down to that pole and rope will go into the pole and forward and then you'd be able to reef it off there so you could right. hang the sail way off the transom like yes. really far back right and the further back the more it's like boy it just whoop, brings you right in the wind you know yeah so it'll help me point a lot better anyway i think it's something i should probably talk to him on a, an actual sail plane yeah i about. think so you know and there's something about balancing your rig in heavy weather too you know like when you're out in the ocean um the one of the one, it, it, you know it's that like most boats unless they're really poorly rigged i think don't don't necessarily they have basically weather helm not lee helm right yeah is it lee helm is not weather film yeah it's lee helm but after a while if you can't get that mizzen sail involved and it's really fucking heavy you're like you can't fucking like you're the tiller like but a little bit of mizzen and it's like yeah the thing's balanced now and I all right, I know you're supposed to be doing a lot of work with me today, Micah, but instead <laughs> we're gonna. Not me that day. This is not the day. We did our work in the morning, and yeah. we're gonna join. Is there anything in the prop? Uh, yeah, you got a little bit of. Well, well not in the prop, there, but, but you got it in the mo in the box. You got a bunch of props. Right. Stuff down. So this is a little yeah. Torquedo 4.0 cruise. Yeah. Cruise this is their um their electric outboard, which is only a 4,000 watt motor. So some field people would suggest that's a little inadequate. It's a little, it's a little small. But, but I feel that as sailors, the trick is to sail safely and don't go into a situation where you need to have a big motor to escape from, because you don't have to play that way. Admittedly, these are two very experienced sailors, and I am not. So I'm gonna go for a little bit more horsepower to get me out of all the situations I will most likely put myself in. <laughs> Watch out for all those rocks, eh? Why you don't wanna, you wanna try to use this kind of a concrete system? You stay in one place and Well, that's, uh, well, that's it for today's episode. This is actually a few days later where I'm editing the episode and testing out the audio. And uh, I really like it. Uh, I think I'm gonna put a windsock on it though, because when we were out on the boat, as you could tell, it uh, capped out from the wind there a few times. The onboard noise cancellation of my camera did an okay job, but uh, yeah, I think, I, I think it needs a windsock. Also, the audio levels are pretty high. I think I'm gonna bring that down in camera because I'm pretty sure it capped out a few times there. Needless to say, it is a fantastic little microphone. It's the best mid-range um, sound that I think I've ever gotten out of one of these little mics. So I'm very, very impressed with it. Um, and uh, I will continue to use it through all the following episodes and we'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> Judging by the build quality, it should last a lot longer than the last couple microphones I've had. So thank you so much for Comica for sending it out and I'll include a link in the description if you guys are interested. Cheers.